study basic linear algebra, you study vectors, vector spaces, and linear mappings at a general but abstract level. When we study analytic geometry, we add some geometric interpretation and intuition to all these concepts. In particular, we look at geometric vectors and compute their lengths and distances and the angles between vectors. To be able to do this, we equip the vector space with an inner product that induces the geometry of the vector space. Inner products and their corresponding norms and metrics capture the intuitive notion of similarity and distances, which we use to develop the support vector machine. We will then use the concepts of lengths and angles between vectors to discuss orthogonal projections, which play a central role when discussing principal component analysis and regression via maximum likelihood estimation. When we think of geometric vectors, that is directed line segments that start at the origin, then intuitively the length of a vector is the distance of the end of this directed line segment from the origin. In what follows, we'll discuss the notion of length of vectors using the concept of a norm. A norm on a vector space V is a function that maps vectors to real numbers, which assigns to each vector X its length, norm of X, which is a real number, such that for every real number lambda and all vectors X and Y, the following three properties hold. Absolute homogeneity, that is, the norm of lambda x is equal to absolute value lambda times the norm of x. The triangle inequality, the norm of x plus y is less or equal to the norm of x plus the norm of y. And positive definiteness, the norm of x is greater or equal to zero and is equal to zero if and only if and only if x is equal to zero. In geometric terms, the tri triangle inequality states that for any triangle, the sum of the lengths of any two sides must be greater than or equal to the length of the remaining side. This definition is in terms of a general vector space V, but here we're only going to consider finite dimensional vector spaces. Rn. Recall that a vector x in Rn is uh, the element of a vector. And we'll talk about specific elements of a vector using the subscript x sub i. Here's an example. The Manhattan norm or the one norm is defined to be the sum of the absolute values of the components of X. So the sum of the absolute value of the XIs. The Manhattan norm is the east-west north-south distance from the origin to the point. In the right panel, you'll see the Euclidean norm. The Euclidean norm, also called the two norm, is the square root of the sum of the xi squareds, or it's the square root of x transpose x, or we can define it to be the square root of the dot product of x with itself. It gives the distance as the crow flies from the origin to the point. Throughout what follows, we're going to use, we're going to assume that we're using the Euclidean norm unless we state otherwise. In this example, we're actually going to compute the length of the vector 1, negative 3, 5 using both the Manhattan norm and the Euclidean norm. So using the Manhattan norm, the norm of x is the sum of the absolute value of the components. So absolute one plus absolute negative three plus absolute five 
is equal to nine. The Euclidean norm, on the other hand, is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So we have one squared plus negative three squared plus five squared, and we take the square root. So that gives the root of 35. Root of 35 is right around six. So you can see that the distance from the origin to x is different depending on how we compute the distance. Another norm we could talk about is the L-infinity norm. The L-infinity norm is defined to be the max of the absolute value of each component. So if we want to again compute the length of x, the vector 1, negative 3, 5, this time using the infinity norm, we need to look at the maximum of the absolute value of each component, or the maximum of 1, absolute value negative 3, and 5. The largest number here is 5, and so the infinity norm of this vector is 5. So again, we've seen three different norms, and we've found that the length of x is different in each of these situations depending on which norm we use. One thing that we want to do is to be able to prove that a distance metric is in fact a norm. There are entire branches of math devoted to looking at norms and norm linear spaces. These branches of math have developed hundreds and hundreds of theorems and tools related to norms. To be able to use these tools, all we have to be able to do is to be able to prove that a function is in fact a norm. So rather than having to prove individual properties each time we change our norm, we simply prove that a metric is a norm and then we can take advantage of all of these free tools and theorems at our disposal. So in this example, we'd like to prove that the L-infinity norm is in fact a norm. There are three properties to prove here. To prove absolute homogeneity, we need to prove that the norm of lambda x is equal to absolute value lambda times the norm of x. So we can see that the norm of lambda x is equal to uh, the norm of lambda times the vector x1 all the way through xn. Using normal scalar multiplication, this gives us the norm of a vector that consists of lambda x1, lambda x2, all the way down to lambda xn. Now the L-infinity norm simply looks at the maximum value of each of the absolute values. So we're looking for the max of absolute lambda x1, lambda x2, et cetera, all the way to absolute lambda xn. Now, of course, the maximum number there is going to be, is going to occur where we've got the largest xn by absolute value. The maximum value is going to be that absolute value times absolute value of lambda. And so we get absolute lambda times the max of absolute x1, absolute x2, all the way to absolute xn. And this, of course, is equal to lambda times the norm of n, or norm of x, by definition. So we have absolute homogeneity because the norm of lambda x is equal to lambda times the norm of x. Property number two is the triangle inequality. We need to prove that the norm of x plus y is less or equal to the norm of x plus the norm of y. So the norm of x plus y is equal to the max of the absolute value of each of the xi plus yi's. Now the largest sum of the xi plus yi's has to be less than or equal to the largest x plus the largest y because the largest sum is not necessarily the sum of the largest two values, because they may not occur 
on the same row. So that means that the max of the absolute value of the xi plus yi's is less or equal to the max of the xi's plus the max of the yi's. But that is then equal to the norm of x plus the norm of y. And so we have the triangle inequality that the absolute or that the norm of x plus y is less than or equal to the norm of x plus the norm of y. Finally, positive definiteness. We want to prove that the norm of x is greater or equal to zero and is only zero if and only if x is a zero vector. Well, the L infinity norm takes the maximum of all the absolute values, which means because we're working with absolute values that every one of these norms has to be greater or equal to zero. And when is this vector equal to zero? Only if all the components are equal to zero, which would make x the zero vector. And so it's positive definite because the norm of x is always greater or equal to zero and equal to zero if and only if x is the zero vector. In our upcoming videos, we'll see how to put the norm to good use in the context of linear algebra.